Shalom and welcome back to the Light to the Nations uh, channel. A few days ago, I was uh, watching some news and I got to see a video that uh, I found it so relevant to, to us an additional piece of what's going on and to us an additional a key of the puzzle that is uh, showing us on the days that we are living. You know, we have been discussing this on the, every Shabbat, that the, everything that's going on in the world is a, a fulfillment of what we read in the scripture. You know, I think there's no doubt that the, everything that's happening is what we see clearly written in the word of Yahuwah. And uh, sometimes no matter that uh, we, we have been studying for a long time the scriptures, every time that we get in contact to some news and the new developments in the, the current world, uh, at least it happened to me, is that uh, I, I cannot be more than amazed on how the things are being fulfilled. And uh, you know, when I watched uh, this video, maybe you already got in contact with this information, but I found it really important to share it. Because uh, we have been the talking and the praying for strength we are having talking and praying for wisdom and just to to see and hear what's going on is something that the, it should serve us and should help us to understand that the, the way we have uh, decided to walk and the conviction that is in our heart is to be strengthened and uh, we need to believe even more than ever that that decision was the best decision we we could make that the the path and the way of Yahuwah and the, his word were truth so you know a few years ago i was a chatting in this channel uh, study that is not completed because you know it's, it's very difficult to complete that study. I'm referring to the study of the last days, the last day series, about the different, uh, different aspects of the last days. And we're studying for so many, so many hours, so many days, and so many videos, uh, interesting aspects of the, the timeline of the, the last days. And uh, I think there is no doubt that uh, we are in those days. There are so many things going on, and uh, for sure, more things will come very soon, most probably, in the world. Uh, that uh, this one that I'm going to share with you now is just an additional, additional the evidence of the days that we are living, and not only an evidence of the days that we are living, is just uh, an amazing acknowledged acknowledgement what we have received in these uh, several years and what we have learned directly here in the word of Yahuwah. So what I'm talking about and what, what is uh, this about is a speech that the current prime minister of uh, Israel, uh, his name is Naftali Bennett, uh, most probably if you have been uh, following the news, uh, about what's happening in the in Israel, you know that the 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 forming the current government was a difficult situation. You know, I have friends in Israel. I have the chance to discuss with them about the 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 whole situation that was going on. You know, there is an a Hebrew Hebrew word that I'm gonna teach you today. I learned this uh, many years ago. This word is balagan. Balagan, what means? Balagan is a big mess. 
So, so they were telling me about this Balagan, this big mess that was happening because of the, the first, second, third election that uh, they were not able to create the government. So, so there was a complete chaos, a complete Balagan. And, uh, and you know, at the end, they, they formed this government that is, is very weird in the way that they, they did it. And, uh, you know, the former prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, left the position as prime minister. And this new guy, this new person, Naftali Bennett, uh, that is a religious person, uh, you can see him uh, wearing the kippah, his head, uh, took the position. And, you know, the speech he gave, it was uh, just uh, a matter of days ago. It was the, during his visit to the U.S., the last visit. And the, he gave this speech, and I want to share it with you, because what he said was, the, for, in my eyes, was amazing. And I'm going to stop uh, time to time just to, to share with you my, my thoughts on this, and also to, to connect it to the scripture. I hope this is not, not to be a long video, just a short one. Yes, I want to deliver it and show and share with you this message. And uh, because uh, this is really important, and I will share the link to the video in the description as well. So you want to, to, to listen to this, the entire speech, I think uh, you should do it. So, so let me share the screen with you. And uh, we will see. So, so basically, this is the Naftali Bennett, is the Prime Minister Bennett. And he's giving a speech to the Jewish community. In, the, in New York. Uh, as I said, this I think it happened at the end of September, something like that. So, so let, me, let me share the, um, the speech with you. So here we go. And I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of you and tell you how much it means for, for me as Prime Minister of Israel to know that all of you on Zoom and here and across the states, you have our backs. You have our back, and it just means a lot because we're, as I described today, uh, we're working darn hard in a very tough area to build a, an optimistic, energetic, can-do country. Uh, and knowing that each and every one of you is working always to strengthen us means so much. I bring with me a new spirit from uh, Jerusalem, the eternal capital. <laughs> it's a spirit of goodwill. It's a spirit of working together. Uh, this government, which uh, was an accident that turned into a purpose, I, I hadn't planned in a million years to be in a government with the folks I'm in. And I never, never thought it would work let alone be the prime minister. I mean, to begin with, Israelis aren't an easy group, right? <laughs> but we were really, I wanna share with you uh, the, the story of the government because it's very relevant in a moment also for our relationship. So we were in four consecutive elections. The air was poisonous, poisonous. And uh, there was a sense of helplessness in, in the air. People were despaired. Like, what's the point going and putting a ballot for the fifth time if you're just going to get the same deadlock? And um, I remember it was uh, Shabbat morning where I had to make a decision because I was the guy in the middle. I'm, I'm good at negotiations taking a small number in leverage, but my point was that uh, I uh, collected my, my kids and my wife and in the kitchen and, and I said, listen, Abba is about to do something really unpopular. Lots of people are gonna call Abba very bad names, but I want you to know why I'm doing it. Because I care for our country. And if we don't do this, if we don't sit together, people with profoundly different ideas about, about everything pretty much, if we don't sit together, 
this thing's gonna tear apart. And we do have a legacy, the Jewish people, that's, we've got this bug that haunts us of division. We lost our first Jewish home to division between uh, Israel and Judea. By the way, do you folks know what was the specific reason they separated? Does anyone know? What, what was the, the igniter? It was taxes. Yeah. Solomon's son, Rehabam, decided to raise taxes. Bad idea. <laughs> so we, uh, we lost 80% of the Jewish people. All of us are descendants only, only of Judea and Benjamin, right? When I hear this, you know, a few days ago, you know, I was totally amazed, amazed and, and, and taking my, my shirt and my head. Because this is the first time that I hear uh, a person in this, uh, in this position recognizing about the division of the two houses, the house of Israel, the house of Yehuda. And uh, also recognizing that uh, no matter that they call them the house of Israel, also Jewish people, and this is a mistake, we know this, recognizing that the 80% of the population of the full Israel was lost and was part of the house of Israel. And not only that, he's recognizing that the Jewish people of today are descendants of the tribe of Yehuda, Judah, and the tribe of Benjamin. You know, having a person in this position is the prime minister of the current country of Israel, is the current government of Israel, recognizing that the, there is a second house. It's the house of Israel representing 80% of the people of Yahuwah, that they are not descendant of. There is a different people, that the, there was a division between the two houses. You know, just having a person in his position, recognizing this at this time, for me is something, you know, <laughs> that I, I never thought that was going to happen. I never heard something like this in the past. And for me, this is a, it's a, an additional evidence that we are living in the last days. Because we know that the house of Israel was dispersed among all the nations. And you and me, we have been called by Yahuwah. Because we are part of that house. We are part of the house of Israel among the nations. And having somebody, a person, descendant from the tribe of Judah, the position of the prime minister of the current government of Israel, recognizing the two houses, for me, is just amazing. Let's continue listening. And then we regrouped, formed another house, another home, another Jewish state. The first one survived 80 years, the first temple, 80 years. King David and Solomon, about 80 years. The second temple, or the second commonwealth of the Jewish people, survived as a sovereign and united country about 73 years during the Maccabees. And then again, internal strife tore us apart. So the Jewish people have never exceeded 80 years in Eretz Israel as a sovereign united state. We're now 73 years old. Man, this time, we're not going to let it fall apart. We're not going to let it fall apart. That's why. You know what he said now that this is, you know, is the scripture basically fulfilling in front of our eyes. He's recognizing that uh, they are not being able through our history 
to survive for 80 years in a unified government or unified empire in a unified kingdom. He's recognizing that uh, now is 73 years already since the current state of Israel was formed. And, uh, you know, he's saying that they're not going to let this happen again. They're not going to let the current government and the current state of Israel to, to, to fall apart. But we know, and what's the, the relevance of all of this? And let me read the scripture for, for all of you. And this is in the book of Matthew, Matthew Yahu. This is an amazing prophecy of our Mashiach, Yahushua, in the chapter 24, verse uh, 33. It says, So you also, when you see all this, know that he is near at the doors. Truly, I say to you, this generation shall by no means pass away until all this takes place. And let me read it from the verse 32, because that verse 32 is, is, is connected to all of this. It says, I learned this parable from the fig tree, when it, uh, its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves. You know that the summer is near. So you also, when you see all this, know that he is near at the doors. Truly, I said to you, this generation shall by no means pass away until all this takes place. What Yahushua was referring, and we were studying this in the last day series, he was referring to the house of Yehuda, the current Jewish people that are in the state of Israel, are part, and he, he even mentioned, they are descendants of the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. The fig tree is a representation of the house of Yehuda. And Yahushua said that that generation of the end times, the generation of the house of Yehuda. It says, and let me read it, and I don't want to take my words. It says, truly I say to you, this generation by no means pass away until all this takes place. So, it's been 73 years already, according to the book of, the book of Tehillim, book of Psalms. It says that generation is between 70 and 80 years. Isn't, isn't it? Isn't it that amazing that uh, it's totally connected to what Naftali Bennett also said? That they have not been able to survive for more than 80 years, a generation. The last unified government in the time of the Maccabees and the Maccabees was 73 years. Now they also have 73 years. So this is a complete evidence of the times we are living. And the, it's more, it's now more than ever, as we have been talking and talking every week in every Shabbat in Virtual House Church, is that we need to pray. We need to seek the face of Yahuwah because He is the only one that can sustain us in these times. It's nothing that we need to fear. We need to have the strength of Yahuwah in our hearts, understanding that the hope we have in front of us is so great and huge that the, everything that we see that's happening in the world, with evidences like the one that I'm sharing with you, is, a, is, is something to, to keep us strong and to holding fast to that hope that we are on the side of Yahuwah. And if we continue and we endure until the end by the side of Yahuwah, we are going to inherit all those promises. So, you know, he mentioned the other thing that the, I don't want to cause the confusion and I don't want to cause the fear. I just said we have to be strong. But the, he mentioned something that the, for me was very relevant. And uh, I, I didn't have the, the time to share this on the, the study of the last days. It's a pending part. It has been pending for a long time. But I, I, I mentioned it very roughly and the, um, briefly on the, um, in, one of a, a, in a live stream that I did in this, this channel the, 
at the beginning of 2020, I think, before to we resume the virtual house church. It's about uh, Babylon. What's the, the identity of Babylon? And I was uh, chatting in the, that live stream with all of you is that uh, what I go to understand by studying the word of Yahuwah uh, while I was the, doing the last day series back on 2017 is that the scripture show us two different Babylons. One is the mother Babylon and the other is the daughter of Babylon or daughter of Babel. And the, in that live stream, I was sharing with you what was my understanding and my thoughts, my belief back then, on who was the daughter of Babel and who was the mother of Babel, the mother Babylon. And the, you know, he mentioned something here that I wanted to, to play the, to you just for you to think, just for you to pray, and just for you to study the word of Yahuwah in this regard. So, so let, me, let me put it once again. That's, that's why I took this step, but I'll tell you something. And, and because I do harbor my opinions. It's amazing. It's working. The people that uh, sometimes they demonized me and sometimes vice versa, I demonized them. Uh, when we sit together and we have to tackle day in, day out, real life problems. We're not talking about kumbaya in some seminar. We've got to run a country. We've got to get a budget done. We've got to open up import to reduce prices. We've got to take care of COVID, bring a booster, not bring a booster. There's stuff to be done. Well, they love the country, not an iota less than I do. The right doesn't have a monopoly on patriotism. The left does not have a monopoly on human rights or the desire for peace. We all love Israel. We all share a deep passion to build a better future. And when you have goodwill, that's all you need, goodwill and a bit of trust, it can work and it is working. So this is indeed the most diverse government in Israel's history, and I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful, and I'm determined to make it work. <laughs> One of the big missions of this generation, of mine as Prime Minister of Israel, is our future the future of Israel and the Jews. Now, it's the first time, for almost, almost 3,000 years, that the biggest concentration of Jews is again the state of Israel. So let me put a pause there. This is not the, the point that I wanted to make, but uh, you know, this is prophecy. What he's saying is prophecy with feeling. We just read what he said, by the, what was said by Yehoshua or Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. Let me read it uh, once again for you. It says, I learned this battle from the fig tree when its branch has already become tender, puts forth leaves. You know that the summer is near. What he just said is that the, the biggest concentration of descendant of the tribe of Yehuda, descendant from the house of Yehuda, are currently in the land of Israel. This is for me is prophecy being fulfilled. And he, the Prime Minister, State of Israel, is, is, is giving the evidences of this fulfillment of the prophecy. But let me let me play the second part to you. Even during Second Temple, all the Jews or most of them were in America in Babylon. <laughs> that was America of then. Yeah, yeah. You know, modern, could get good cereal. You hear what he said? He said that the, in the second temple, most of the house of Yehuda were in America. And he compared America to Babylon. For me, this is so relevant that uh, this person in this position is saying something like this. 
And again, for you that are living in the U.S., I don't want to cause fear or confusion to you. Not at all. But uh, I think uh, it's time for us to go deeper in the study of this amazing book. It's time for us to go deeper on prayers and seeking the face of Yahuwah. Because we need to ask His wisdom to understand the time that we are living. We need to ask His help in order to have the discernment on the time that we are living. And we need to ask His help in order to the Ruach HaKodesh to guide us in these times. You know, the only way that we're going to find the truth, the only way, the only place we're going to find the truth is in His Word. And we need to let the Ruach HaKodesh to guide us in the truth. To understand what's happening in the world, what's coming in the world, and what, what, what needs to, to be our position, our standpoint. And you know, we have been discussing in virtual house church that we need to make a stand for Yahuwah. We have been called to his kingdom. We are not of this world. And uh, there, there are so, so, so much extremes. People are going to the, to the two extremes currently in this world. We cannot participate in that. We have been called to be Kodesh people, a set apart people. Our position should be as a spectator, seeing and being amazed day to day how the word of Yahuwah is being fulfilled. And uh, besides being as an spectator of what's going on in the world, is to become the witnesses of the word and the truth of Yahuwah, the witnesses of the good news of Mashiach to this world full of darkness. That's our role. And not because I'm saying it, because this is what we read in the scripture. So my invitation to all of you, and this is the purpose of this, uh, this uh, short video, I wanted to share with you this news. For me, it was something that caught my attention. And it said, you know, this is so amazing what I, I can see and hear with my, with my eyes and my ears. How Yahuwah is showing us the time we are living. And this is a call to action for us in order to live the life that Yahuwah has intended for you, for you and for me as part of his kingdom. It's time for us to pray to seek Yahuwah, to be under his wings, his shadow, to seek for the guidance of the Ruach HaKodesh and the power that is coming from Yahuwah this time of troubles is the only way that we are going to be able to endure until the end because it's not because of our strength it's because of the strength of Yahuwah within us through the Ruach keeping his truth following his instructions being obedient to his word and to his guidance so brothers and sisters you know <laughs> more than being afraid we need to have joy in our hearts that Yahuwah has decided to put you and me in these times, to give us life in these times. And I said this before in one of the, the live streams of the virtual house. He decided to give us life in these times because he has a purpose for you and for me. And we need to be attentive to understand was the purpose of Yahuwah for us. And there's no doubt that the most important purpose is that we need to be his witnesses. We need to be his light in this time of darkness. Thank you so much for being with me. I hope this uh, is going to be something that's going to bless you. Pray for discernment and praise for wisdom. And I know that Yahuwah will guide your steps. Thank you so much. See you in short. Shalom.